You know what they say, new year, new you. By which I mean you're still the same person, you're just buying and watching new movies. So maybe you're a changed person after seeing them? Let's see what I picked up. Hey everyone, David Fish here, and welcome to fish to go where I do movie and TV show reviews, make lists and do essays. Well, at least that's what I thought I was doing. Because if you've seen lately, I haven't posted a video on this channel since November 2020. And I am so grateful to you new subscribers who subscribe because of that video, or to you returning subscribers who just want to see more of this kind of content, uh, more movie and TV show reviews from me. To be frank, I've just been very busy doing other side projects, which yes, is, is good because now I have money to then spend and splurge on all these Criterion Blu-rays that I'm about to talk about but then I also have less time to make more videos for you guys. I've also sort of been experimenting with TikTok movie reviews, which I know is sort of a, a, a bad word in the YouTube space, but you know, I've just been trying to see what the outreach is on that platform. But no more excuses, I'm gonna try to fit more time in my schedule to make more videos for you guys, including videos like this, because now there's a brand new haul from the Criterion Collection, where they again had their 50% off sale, and I've collected a few movies. Of course, if you just want my immediate hot takes after I see a movie, you can always check out my letterbox at fish to go as well and just follow me on all my social accounts. I think a lot of the posts lately have just been me ranting about the sound design in Tenet and pretty much the last four of Christopher Nolan's movies, but yeah, go ahead and check it out. So with that said, let's see what I picked up during this February's 50% off sale from the Criterion Collection. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and ding that bell so that way you can be notified as soon as new content drops. Oh, and one more thing before I forget, I want to plug my documentary that just came out in December. That's one of the reasons why I was also busy. It's called Suffer for Good and it is now now available on Amazon, Apple TV, Vudu, YouTube Gear. It's pretty much anywhere digitally. It's also on Blu-ray, so be sure to check it out at the link in the description box down below. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about this sale. So the Criterion Collection, which curates historical, aesthetic, and culturally significant films, uh, usually has a 50% off sale in February and October. And the price points during most of the year tend to be pretty high, so this is a perfect opportunity to grab a lot of these Blu-rays and box sets at a smaller price, as well as check out films that you may not have seen otherwise. And I single out Criterion a lot because they've got the whole shebang. They offer these experiential packages from the artwork to the booklets, to the special features and the restorations. There's a tender love and care that you just don't don't get with watching movies just on your streaming platforms. Don't get me wrong though, the Criterion channel offers a wealth of films that are either out of print or hard to find physically, and they're a good harbinger to watch the films first before you invest in the physical product. For me personally, when buying this time around, I was trying to find films that were not a part of the Criterion channel, so that way their existence in the physical format would mean that I could watch it pretty much anytime and not have to worry about the internet going out or the streaming service just taking the films away. Which is so often the case when studios the distributors, or the rights holders' licenses expire. But of course, I still managed to pick up films that are on the channel, but I tried to sort of curate them in a way. So uh, the movies are sort of couplings or double features, or they have some sort of connected theme. You'll see what I mean when I present them. So let's start off with these two films, which are the works of the collaborators Elia Kazan and Bud Schulberg. This is 1954's classic On the Waterfront, starring Marlon Brando. Uh, this is spine number 647. And this is their follow-up film, A Face in the Crowd, from 1957, spine number 970. So for On the Waterfront, I've seen this movie a number of times, whether it was in film school or it was on TCM on TV. Uh, it's just a phenomenal piece of filmmaking. Schulberg's screenplay is one of the best, and yes, Marlon Brando is at his best, but I would not count out Eve Marie Saint and Carl Malden, who put out some pretty deep portrayals. I'm really happy to finally own it and it looks like Criterion has stacked this thing like crazy. It's got two discs and it's got a 4k digital restoration. It's got two versions itself that are on the second disc that are different aspect ratios and a documentary or short subject about why they have different aspect ratios. It also comes in this digipack case with really great muted artwork and a really thick booklet which I'm looking forward to getting into. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited to check this out once again. And I paired that with the two filmmakers follow up which I had not even seen until a few days ago, and that is A Face in the Crowd. This is either one of, or I think it is, Andy Griffith's debut feature, and he is this boisterous, loud persona, and he's so in sync with the screenplay that is so eerily prescient to today's intermingling of entertainment and media and politics that it actually made me angry watching it. Could it have shaved off a few minutes here and there? Sure, but that does not take away at all from any of the themes and the powerful performances that re really left me reeling. I can tell you up front that the restored 4K trans 
transfer looks great. Uh, there's also a fantastic interview on here with Andy Griffith biographer Evan Dalton Smith, as well as a new documentary featuring Griffith and a bunch of the other players involved in making this thing. Yeah. Uh, this really blew me away. I love this movie and I'm glad to have it now in the collection. Following that up are a couple films from filmmaker Orson Welles, whom you might have heard from a little film called Citizen Kane. But he followed up that film a year later with The Magnificent Ambersons, which is spine number 952 in the collection. And I would argue that it's technically on the same merit plane as Citizen Kane. Just the making of this movie behind the scenes has a storied history, which could be a movie in and of itself. But as it stands in its current form, it's still a very impactful one, and I'm really looking forward to seeing it again. It's another Digipack release with a 4K digital restoration. I have not had the chance to see it, but I hope to check it out soon. It's got a lot of other special features which I'm looking to check out. And I really do like the booklet it comes with. It's sort of in the style of a screenplay uh, that's actually stapled together. You see the staples and it has the typewriting font uh, and it sort of ties back into the the storied history I was mentioning earlier. So really looking forward to checking this out again. I also picked up another film from Orson Welles from 1966, which I have not seen before, called Chimes at Midnight. This is spine number 830, and it apparently is also regarded as a masterpiece by many. It's supposed to be Orson Welles sort of Frankensteining a few Shakespeare plays, and he himself plays Falstaff. Uh, and it's got some crazy battle sequence in it. I saw the trailer for it. It's sort of one of those situations where it's like, shut up, David, just put it in the disc already and watch it. I actually found out after buying this that this is on the Criterion channel right now, uh, but I am still interested in seeing some of the special features, including some new interviews. It also does have a new high definition digital restoration. Also, something you just don't get with streaming is look at the artwork inside. Look at the leaflet artwork inside. Uh, just on the disc itself and in the interior after you take the booklet out. It's just really cool. And the booklet itself is sort of a poster. It has, let me see if I can flip this out real quick. So it's got these characters in the same artwork and style design as the cover. And then you have the typical Criterion essay and other information just sort of spread out on the other side. Again, it's that experiential package Criterion offers that even if you have never seen the film, you sort of get to know and understand it from beginning to end. Sorry, beginning to end rather. Speaking of movies that I had not seen before, but Criterion offers an awesome package for them. Uh, these are a couple of 80s cult classics that did seem interesting. I just never got around to seeing them. This is a movie I was always intrigued by just because the cover art is by one of my favorite artists, Jay Shaw. And this is 1984's Repo Man. That is spine number 654 in the collection. Now, I've read much about this scrappy, anarchist, punk, sci-fi, comedy debut feature that's sort of everything and nothing at the same time, and that caught my interest. And how could you go wrong with Harry Dean Stanton? It's also set in Los Angeles, which is my hometown, so hometown pride for better or worse. Seriously though, Criterion really decked out this digipack with awesome neon green artwork, completely loaded with director Alex Cox's sketches of the screenplay that he sort of pitched, an essay talking about how this movie even came into existence, and a wealth of special features that include an entire television version of the film that's sort of cleaned up. Uh, so yeah, just look at the packaging on this. It's got artwork on the top, on the sides, everywhere. Criterion, you really outdid yourself with this one, so really happy to have this. And then following that is actually one of the company's newest releases. This is spine number 1068. Uh, this is Joyce Chopra's Smooth Talk. Honestly, I really just got this movie because Laura Dern is a goddamn treasure. But I did see the trailer of it, and it does look pretty good. It's sort of a coming-of-age womanhood drama. It also does come with a great booklet. It's got a lot of special features, a lot of interviews, and a new restored 4K transfer. So yeah, really looking forward to checking this one out too. For the last four films I have, let's jump to the 90s. And for the next two movies, let's jump to specifically 1991. This is the best picture Jonathan Demme film from 1991 called The Silence of the Lambs, spine number 13. I think this marks the, the, the spine number that is the, the earliest one in my collection. Is that how you say it? I don't have any single digit ones yet though. So you guys hold me accountable. <laughs> Guys, that was perfect. I'm talking about the silence of the lambs. Okay, I'll probably just, I'll, I'll walk myself out. Okay, so I've already seen this film before and I was really hoping to pick it up during the sale to revisit the film as I haven't seen it in many moons. 
uh, and I really love the packaging for this thing as well. It's got great artwork, another digipack release, another two disc set with stacked features. I don't know what else there really is to say about this film. It is definitely one of the best pictures of the 90s and probably in cinema of the 20th century. Now the next movie doesn't necessarily have any connection to The Silence of the Lambs. They just both happen to be released in 1991. Uh, but I am looking to get more into Gus Van Sant's filmography and this is considered his breakout hit. And so this is the movie starring Keanu Reeves and River Phoenix and one of his last roles, My Own Private Idaho. And this is spine number 277 for those interested. Again, this is a movie I don't really know much about. I've always heard of it. And I am looking to see what Gus Van Sant's style from the early 90s was. And also, once again, Criterion has knocked it out of the park with its packaging. It has this experiential feel. I haven't even seen the movie, but just from the look of the booklet and the artwork uh, that has this sort of filmic grain and muted blacks over it, I, I feel like I can already get a sense of Gus Van Sant's style without having even seen the movie. And then when I eventually do put in the disc to watch it, it's not that I'm not surprised, but I'm just welcomed into this filmic world. So great package, and I'm really hoping it's a great movie as well. Last but not least, I don't have any Robert Altman in my collection, which I needed to change on this round for some reason. Uh, so I picked up a couple of his movies from the 90s. They're sort of a resurgence in his career. And so that is 1992's The Player, which is spine number 812. This is actually a movie I reviewed on my channel roughly 10 years ago, which is crazy to believe. So I haven't seen the movie in that long. You can actually see the review by clicking on that button in the corner I'm pointing to, or just check out the link in the description box. Uh, yeah, so check this out. And then secondly, I picked up 1993's Shortcuts, which is spine number 265. This is a film I have not seen before, but it was recommended by a ton of people, including Daisuke, whose opinion I just admire so many times over. And it's a movie that's also set in LA, so gotta represent it once again. At three hours long in an ensemble piece, it kind of gives me the vibes and feel of Paul Thomas Anderson's Magnolia, so that's a movie I also love. So I'll be sure to carve out time for this and its special features, which there are many of them. And that is it, guys. I picked up 10 films during this sale, some of which I've seen before and would love to revisit, and others which I've never seen before and I'm really hoping to enjoy. Enjoy. For what it's worth to you guys over the past few months, I also picked up Martin Scorsese's The Last Temptation of Christ and Bong Joon-ho's Parasite. And I do want to mention two more films that I added to my collection that were not picked up during the sale and rather at full price, which is something that I would not really recommend doing or usually do. And maybe this is a little opportunistic of me, but I was made aware in a Facebook group that I follow that a slew of Paramount-owned movies that are in the Criterion Collection are not having their licenses renewed. So those movies are effectively out of print and no longer for sale. So final units of those discs that are out on the market, like that's it. That's all there is until Criterion regains those licenses, but that's probably unlikely because Paramount just came out with their new streaming service, and it looks like they are also revisiting those movies from the collection and releasing their own Blu-ray versions. So in a mad dash to get these films, I scurried to Amazon and was able to pick up a couple that I've been meaning to get anyways. Uh, this is Terrence Malick's Days of Heaven and Robert Altman once again his 1975 film, Nashville. Now I had seen Days of Heaven literally days ago and fell in love with it. And I really wanted to have it in the collection anyways, just probably not at the price that I paid for it. And same with Nashville. It's another Altman film that goes right along with the other two I just picked up. So I'm just happy to have these two movies in my collection. Now, thankfully I had already owned Rosemary's Baby from 2012, which is one of the best horror movies of ever. <laughs> and uh, so I, thankfully I didn't have to pick up that one. Anyways, that's it guys. That's my haul from the most recent Criterion Collection 50 percent off sale and i'll likely participate in the next one in october until that time i would love to know what you guys picked up yourselves and if you've seen any of the movies that i picked up as i would love to discuss so be sure to leave all of that in the comments down below if you enjoyed this video i would appreciate a huge thumbs up a subscribe and ding that bell so that way you are notified as soon as new content drops thanks again and as always i'm david fish for fish to go